Hello there guys, welcome back to the E-Bike Repairs YouTube channel. My name's Dash and I take apart and fix very fun and exciting stuff uh, like e-bike batteries, motors, scooter parts, all that fun stuff. So today I've got this, it's a Ribble battery. So it's a 36 volt, 6.8 amp hour pack. Uh, um, so a Marla thing. And it is a Marla X Series B1. It seems to have the controller built into it because we've got our um, torque or speed sensor plug. Ooh, the spider. Uh, we've got our connector for our battery sort of charge port jobby, and we've got our motor cable here. And then on the other end, so this this slides up inside the bike. It was an absolute nightmare to get out. I'll get into that. Then we've got this cable, which I don't know what it does, but it doesn't connect to anything. Maybe a display. Looks like a display kind of cable. And then this one here goes up to the little power button on the bars, or on the, the crossbar. So, this battery pack is held in by one, two, three screws. It goes up inside the bottom bracket, and when it's in, this cable has to be removed from the frame. These cables have to be unplugged, which is easy. There's a little plate on the bottom you can take off. And this plug has to come all the way out from by the motor. So all the way down by the, the rear dropout, it's snaked up through the frame. It's already a pain in the bum. It would seem that when you replace the battery, you replace oh, right, the entire controller as well. The battery and controller seem to be together. Um, to remove it, you had to remove the bottom bracket, which was a um, Shimano. In this case, anyway, SMBB7141, and that's a uh, press fit bottom bracket. Absolutely had to do a number on it, it's destroyed. It's a very common situation that you have to replace these, but where it's been press fit into a carbon frame, uh, it was just it was a whole thing to undo it. So, anyway, um, let's pop this open and have a little look see. I believe we've got one, two, three, four screws up this end, and I've got a Torx 10 bit in my impact driver. And that's what I'm going to use to remove these. They are different screws from top to bottom. These ones here are countersunk head on this side, which is by the um, charge port connector. And these ones here are non countersunk head which is over by the motor connector. That pulls the end off there. Okay. Not too sure how you even open this yet, but we'll get to that. And then on the other end, we've got four screws, same situation again, uh, but I think they are identical screws, but it looks a bit the same Torx 10 bid. Four of those. Okay. And does that ring pop off there? I haven't done this before. As far as I can tell, no one seems to have really done this before and taken one apart, so that's a gonna be a little interesting thing. Oh the fault with this by the way, so I forgot that part, is that the this little cover plate there, the customer left it to sit for a long time and it died. Won't take a charge anymore. Looks as though the two halves of the case must split apart, but who knows how. Don't see any hidden screws under stickers or anything like that. Don't see any of that. I see uh, the controller guts in there. I wonder if you can just pop this apart. It's probably sealed together, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, won't be sealed in a minute. Find a smaller. Thing for prying with. Is that in frame? Hopefully, that's in frame and you can see. Ah, oh, it's clips. 
there are clips, should I say. There we go. <sighs> nice. Right then. Um, I look to have disconnected some plugs in doing this, but I suppose that's fine. This plug goes there, that plug goes there. So I see here we've got our motor phase wires, yellow, green, blue. We've got our motor halls seem to go to this plug and then also this uses the same thing as the motor halls the same main connector to the board here to join into there I see our battery charge port here we've got our pos and neg and our two sort of control wires this will be oh yeah look there's a one one of these control wires on the uh, the charge port here is labelled CAN high and CAN low, so CAN H and CAN L. So that's pretty much automatically a bloody no-go, isn't it? And then we've got the BMS itself down here. How much of this I can do without taking it all apart? Hopefully some. Okay. I can give you guys a look at that. How's that there? So we've got our balancing resistors thing, little circuit board. The MOSFETs must be underneath. This is a multi layer PCB. I see the balance connector itself down there. This will be the controller. Looks as though it's got some kind of <coughs> Bluetooth type module just there. Uh, main chip, all sorts going on there, that's multi-layer as well. I'm not going to get into anything to do with that, I don't think. What I'm here to look at is, are the batteries goosed, will they take a charge, how much voltage is in there, and all that. We've also got running up each side of the pack, one on here and one on here, both wires for our, what I presume is display cable and our buttony thing from the, uh, the other end. And they run up there and the heat shrunk inside the battery. Uh, bit there. So, how do I get this off without bringing everything right up like that? And then the motor phases disconnect, and then so does that. There we go, that's that half off. So, cell wise, we've got. Well, I think they're Panasonic NCR18650 GAs. Now, I can't remember where I read it, but I'm pretty sure that the Samsung and the Panasonic cell, no, sorry, Samsung, the Sanyo and Panasonic cell are identical. So it looks, it's got Panasonic writing, but red like a Sanyo cell. I think they're just, they're made in the same factory or something like that. So. See if we can pop this BMS completely out. I see three little screws in there. We might need to just undo to remove this. There's one little Phillips head jobbies. One there, one there, and one in there. There we go. Right, now we can get to it. There's a little corrosion on here, or maybe it's just leftover flux from the manufacturing process. Yeah, if it's on everything, it's probably leftover flux. We've got a couple of fuses, I think, here. These Z jobbies must be fuses. When you plug in the charger, it does power up the bike, but the BMS won't let the cells themselves take a charge, probably because they're completely dead, but... I suppose I shall get to that now. Can you see my meter screen properly? Yes, we'll go with yes. What have we got across the whole pack? Across the whole pack we've got one volt. 
that'll do it. <laughs> and are our fuses continuous? So my meter in continuity mode. Yeah. Yes, there's uh, got a conformal coating over the stuff, so you've got to really jab or scrape with the meter probes. Well, I think that answers that question very quickly then, doesn't it? Is that uh, the customer unfortunately needs to buy a whole new pack. Which is a right shame. Now, for the sake of argument, could you replace these? I think it's unlikely to, that you can replace the cells. I mean, obviously, you could physically build a new pack and replace the cells and heat shrink up and make it look exactly the same. Because it'll be built on a long straight line and then folded together in a zigzag and the balance leads will be soldered to tabs that go along the length of it. But will it work? Unlikely. Obviously, oh, there are the MOSFETs, just they're tiny little things like you get on a computer circuit board. Um, it's unlikely because this uses CAM communication high and low, which normally means it's a smart BMS. And when you try and disconnect cells for testing or replace cells or anything like that, or if it detects a problem, and they seem to go, any smart BMS, so a Bosch, a Kalkov, a Bros, or whatever, they all seem to go into this just permanent off mode, uh, and they'll never turn on again because they're detected a fault. And of course, we don't have whatever software is needed to communicate with it and tell it, oi, wake up. Turn back on, your cells are okay, whatever it is. It's possible the manufacturer doesn't even have that software and their solution is just replace. Which is a terrible e-waste problem. They do it under the guise of safety, which I don't disagree that it, you know, it's partly safety related. But um, you know, it's it's also massively anti-right repair. Is that if these are smart, they should be able to be told that they've turned back on, even if you need, I don't know, a license to rebuild the pack, or the manufacturer could send you just this part, just the cell group, and a, a, a service centre could replace just this, and then program the board and tell the board that everything's okay and it should be usable again. Because there's absolutely no need for you as a customer to be paying to replace the controller, and all this wiring, and all this wiring, and the BMS. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. But such is the way of the world. I can't fix it, so there we go. Um, I think I said that they're GA cells. There you go. Um, but yeah, who knows. And this is uh, an X35 battery pack. Well, that kind of answers that, I think. Um, it's a shame, but not really a lot I can do about it. Um, if you like this kind of thing, please feel free to leave a like rating, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, something like that. Uh, what else? You could become a channel member if you felt like it. Or watch more videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.